Good morning, this is David Cross, and I'd like to invite you to listen to God's Word in Heaven Bound. I see a city. I see my home. I see my blessed. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. And I would like to extend a very, I don't know if you say happy, I almost said Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, or how you give that greeting. But I do know there's lots of gift giving going on on Valentine's Day because it's a day to share your love. And we are extra excited once again that you have joined us today on this Valentine's Day, as well as this Lord's Day. And please stay tuned for this half hour, and we hope you enjoy this gift that we are going to offer you as a token of our love and a token of God's love for you. So Preacher will talk a little bit more about that as the program goes on. So as we've said in the past, my name is Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins and the whole congregation here at Calvary Bible Church, We are a small congregation located in Gregg, New York. If you would like to come visit today, especially if you are looking for a good Bible-believing church, please come visit us today. We are located at 6869 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. You can put that into your GPS and it'll get you just about here, but it's 911 address system in Lewis County is not the greatest when it comes to using GPS. So it will get you in the vicinity, but if you like the old-fashioned directions, if you're coming out of Boonville or Utica, head north on Route 12, and you're going to make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of the north, like Lowville or Watertown, head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of Rome or West Leiden area, head north on 26, keep straight onto 12D, then head north on Route 12, and once again, you will make a right-hand turn on to Burdick's Crossing Road. And Burdick's Crossing Road is located right next to the Valley Brook Drive-In. So you take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end, make a left-hand turn on to Gregg Road, head up the hill, and make your first right-hand turn on to Sweeney Road, and we'll be up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. And the snow is pretty much gone, so the Not much for snowmobiling going on around here, but if you're in the area, there's plenty of room, and we hope you will join us today. With this being the second Sunday of the month, we will begin our services at 9 o'clock this morning with our fellowship breakfast. Then Sunday school will be at 9.30. Morning service will be at 10.30, and we will break for half a day and be back here once again tonight at 6 o'clock for the evening service. And then we'll be back Wednesday night at 7 for the midweek prayer service. Now we do have something special going on today as well. We have a couple guest speakers, so Preacher will not be speaking today at church. But don't use that as an excuse not to come, because you can get so much out of other people that are coming. And one of the guys is, I believe, working on heading out into the mission field. So he'll usually have something great to update on what's going on. So come out and join us for that. If all else fails, you cannot make it. We do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com. Well, let's get the day moving. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 29, beginning in verse 20. And Pastor is going to talk about a couple different love scenarios that the Bible mentions. But one of them is such an unconditional love that the person loved us, like actually talked about us in the Bible. So again, turn to Genesis chapter 29, beginning in verse 20. And before pastor comes, let's listen to Gold City as they sing One Scarred Hand. Oh 
Good morning again, friends. It's great to have you with us one more time on Heaven Bound. That was Gold City in one scarred hand. I remember singing years ago a song. That's, I forget exactly the title of it, but it goes, the only thing there referring to heaven, that'll be made by man or scars in the hand of Jesus. And that's true. They will look on him whom they have pierced. When Thomas was not in the upper room, he said, and they later said, I will not believe unless I see the scars in his hand and place my hand 
in his side. Uh, he said, I simply won't believe. A week later, Jesus appeared and said to Thomas, Thomas, he said, reach other thy hand and feel prints in my hand and reach other thy side and be not faithless. The resurrected Christ had those scars and we shall see them, I believe. Through eternity, we'll be reminded of God's great love for us. Here it is, Valentine's Day, and I, I'm not a cynic by any stretch of the imagination, but here's another hallmark holiday for them to sell. And I read this somewhere this past week that they will, there will be sold over a billion Valentine's Day cards. Now, not all by Hallmark, of course, but over a billion holiday or Valentine cards. That's a lot of Valentine cards and a lot of money passing hands over that. But it's Valentine's Day, and I'm not a cynic, as I said, but kind of commercialized and crass, if you ask me, cards and candies and flowers and I said last Sunday in church, I'd like to meet the woman that wants one of those four-foot teddy bears. I asked in church, and not one woman raised their hand, or she looked around, nobody else did, and they, she wasn't about to, but nobody raised their hand on that one. But it's Valentine's Day, day when you express your love for your significant other. The Bible is full of what we would call love stories. There's Ruth and Boaz, of course. There was Solomon. Solomon had many wives. He had like 300 wives, 700 concubines, which in our way of thinking would be about 1,000 wives. Most of those were for, for political reasons that uh, Solomon had all those wives. The Bible indicates he only won loved one. Song of Solomon is about that one that he truly loved, the Shulamite woman. That That is who he truly loved. Some have suggested that is Abishag. Uh, that's mentioned in the Bible. It may or may not have been. But Solomon, of all his wives, seems to have only have loved truly one of them, one great love in his life. There are other Bible, but I suppose one of the great love stories, Bible stories, Bible accounts is the story of Jacob and Rachel. You'll remember that Jacob had been forced to leave home because of deceiving his father, uh, Isaac, because Esau said, I'm going to kill you. And so Jacob fled to Laban, which was brother to uh, his mom. It was his uncle Laban. And while there, he met his cousins, and you say, well, that's kind of disgusting, preacher. Well, things were different back then, a lot different than they are now, of course, but he met his cousins, and, and one of them, the one cousin, the one girl cousin, Laban's daughter's name was Rachel, and Jacob had another wife, Leah, which was Rachel's sister, and he had been kind of tricked by Laban into marrying Leah because Jacob loved Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel. Leah, no. Rachel, yeah. But Rachel and Leah both had maids, and Jacob had children by the maids, several children by the maids. But the Bible indicates that he truly loved Rachel. And in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 29, it says, and Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Laban was a scoundrel. He was as crooked as Jacob was. The word Jacob means schemer or conniver, and that's what Jacob was. After having worked seven years for Rachel, then Laban got Jacob tanked up evidently, and instead of giving him Rachel, he gave him Leah because she was the older and she had to be married first. Next morning, Jacob wakes up, realizes what's happened, goes to Laban and says, oh, well, that's our custom. If you want Rachel, 
you'll have to work seven more years for for her. Now he'd already worked seven, and now he's going to have to work seven more. He's going to have to work fourteen years to marry the girl he loves. Now I wonder how many of us would do that. But the Bible says they seemed but a few days for the great love that he had for her. Oh, how Jacob loved Rachel. Uh, of Leah and I forget the two maids' names. I think one was Bilda or Billa or something like that. And I forget the other one's name. But of those four, uh, Jacob loved Rachel. I mean, he passionately in love with his wife. And unfortunately, she didn't have children for a long time. And then Leah, her sister, tormented her over that. And again, Jacob loved Rachel so very much. And God wasn't treated. She had a son, Joseph. And then she had a son named Benjamin. And when, as Benjamin was being born, Rachel died. But Jacob loved Rachel dearly. And having to work for her for many, many years, they seemed but a few days for his great love for Rachel. And you can find other, you know, Bible stories, other accounts of people who are uh, greatly in love, as I said, wrote Boaz and Ruth and Solomon and Abishag. And I was thinking of another one just a moment ago of, of two people in the Bible that were greatly in love with one another. But but here's the point. Here's the day, Valentine's Day. And we try, and we are, and we do express, you know, I love you. you. Do you love me? Check the box. Yes, no, maybe. Remember when we used to do that when we were in school? Remember when we were kids? And I think now if you did that, they'd probably have you arrested for sexual harassment, but they do stupid stuff like that now, you know. But when we were in school or love, 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 love. We kind of, we throw that word around so easily today. I love, I love this. Somebody said, man, I love dogs. And if my wife dies, I'm going to get one. And, you know, it's like love. How can you love a dog, but more than your wife? But we throw that word around so lightly today. Then a lot of ways it's even lost its meaning. Well, I love you. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? I love, I, I will love you as long as, now see, that's conditional. I'll love you as long as you wash my clothes. I'll love you as long as you fix my supper. I'll love you as long as you work in the garden. I'll love you as long as you bring me your paycheck every Friday. See, all those things are conditional. Jacob loved Rachel such that, I mean, Laban says, you got to work seven years for her. And then he says, now you got to work seven more years for her. I mean, 14 years. But Jacob loved Rachel. And it didn't matter. It did not matter. For his great love wherewith he, he loved Rachel. Now listen, listen, listen. We think of great love stories like that. But let me remind you the greatest love story that has ever been told. And that is the one of how God loved you and me. How God loved us. How God sent his only begotten son. The Bible says God is love. Now there are several attributes of God. I always tell people this, that God is good. And God is good. That's what God is. God is good. But God is love. His whole being, that's what God is, love. For God so loved, so loved, but God commendeth his love that in the ages to come he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace to us because he loves us. So why does God love us so, preacher? I, that I don't know. Just because God loves us just because he loves us. Now, it's not a conditional love. It's not, well, I'll love you if God says, I'll love you no matter. 
in theory, in theory, if you're in love with somebody, you don't love them for what they can do for you. You love them for who they are. They may not be able to do anything for you, but you love them anyway. An unconditional kind of love, the same kind of love God has for us. No, I'll love you as long as you remain beautiful. I'll love you as long as you whatever. I remember hearing an account, it's a true story. Some of you are old enough to remember Vietnam, that terrible war. 58,000 of our best were lost for what appears now to have been no reason whatsoever for the communists took over anyway. But a soldier had been seriously injured, had been burned terribly in Vietnam, and they had gotten him back to a, a hospital in Hawaii. And they flew his wife in, and she came into the room and saw her husband, and she took a brief look at him. She took her wedding ring off, threw it on the bed, walked out of the room. He died a few days later. I wonder if he died of a broken heart. See, that love was conditional. I see some of these wounded warriors on TV, and I see their wives standing by and sticking by. That's got to be difficult. But that's unconditional love. That's the kind of love God has for us. God doesn't say, well, I'll love you if... No, God says, I love you. God does not say to us, now behave yourself and I'll love you. That's not it. God loves us just the way that we are. Now, if you be a good boy, I'll give you a popsicle. No, that's not the way God loves us. God loves us unconditionally. Go clean up your room and... No, God loves us unconditionally. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever does the best they can and tries the hardest they can, I'll give them eternal life. That isn't what that verse says. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave unconditionally, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, unconditional love that God has for you, and he has for me. No greater love hath any man this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You and I have never been loved the way that God loves us, not this lifetime. God loves us unconditionally. God loves you. Yeah, preach, you don't understand how bad I've been. No, I, I don't. But I know this, that God still loves you. You don't realize all the sins I've committed in my life. No, I don't. But I know that God loves you unconditionally. Years ago, we don't sing it very often in church anymore. We play it sometimes. Just as I am without one plea. And I always get the words mixed up. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And as thou bidst, I come to thee. O Lamb of God, I come. And as thou bidst me come to thee. Listen, doesn't matter how you are. God will accept you. God would accept me, absolutely. Just as I am, absolutely. With all of my blemishes and all of my marks and all of my sins, you're telling me that God would still love someone like me. Absolutely. He loves you today loves you right now. God is love. That is what God is. God is love. And he invites you. God calls you. God wants you to come today to him. I read this somewhere, I, it, and believe me, if, if, if I knew who wrote it, I would gladly give them credit for it. But someone said this, that they can't believe that a God of love would send someone to hell. To which someone replied, I can't believe that people would reject the great love that God has for them. And that's true. 
God so loves us, and yet people reject it all the time. Here's somebody that loves them unconditionally, loves them just the way they are, loves them in spite of their faults and their failures, their sins and, and the things that uh, are an offense to God, yet God still loves them. Someone wrote a song, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene, and wonder how he could love me, a sinner, condemned, unclean. But he does. He does, dear friend. He does love you. And he does care for you. That's the way God is. For God is love. And he that cometh to me, or she that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but freely gave him up for us all. How shall he not also freely give us all things through him? God loves us enough that he gave his only son to die for us on the cross. God gave his only son to die for you. Listen to me. You're listening this morning. God gave his son for you so that you could live eternally. Now, you say, boy, preacher, that's some kind of love right there. Absolutely. You mean God loves me that much? Absolutely. And he cares for me? Absolutely. And the Bible says, Jesus said this, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I will. What is it that keeps a person from Jesus? It's their will. They will not come. They will not come that they might have life. Would you come today? There is a great God, the God of the universe, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the prince of the kings of the earth, the Lord Jesus. And he loves you. And he died for you and paid your sin debt for you. Why? Because he loves you. And God sent his only begotten son so that you could live eternally. Why? Because God loves you. No greater love hath any man this. The love of God is just pretty hard to comprehend. Why would he love us? Why would he care for us? Because that's who God is. Such great love exhibited by God and by Christ at Calvary. And the Holy Spirit beckons you today. And the bride and the Spirit say, come. And let him that is a thirst come and drink of the water of life freely. That fountain that is flowing deep and wide is open to you today, dear friend. On this Valentine's Day, why not accept the love of God? Why not accept that wonderful love? Wonderful grace of Jesus, deeper than all my sin. Why not call upon Christ today and invite him to be your Savior? He loves you. He died for you. He paid your sin debt. Why would you turn him away? Don't turn him away. Trust him today, friend, because tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, God does actually love you that much. He sent his only son to die for your sins a horrible death and he knew the death that he was going to have it was foretold from the old testament and then came to reality in the new testament if you're ever feeling like you're not loved enough always remember that god loves you jesus loves you and us at calvary bible church would love for you to fully understand how much god loves you and we would love for you to know that you have a permanent home in heaven. If you have any questions, or if you would like to know how you can know for sure that you are going to heaven when you die, or if you'd like to know more about how much God loves you, give us a call today. Our phone number is 315-348-6271, or you can send us an email. Our email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com, or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. 
Lord will, and we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.